All right, here we go. Yeah, so Thomas Worm here, and everybody knows, you know, my mission is helping first responders break through the life that they deserve. And, and what we're doing tonight is talking with Susan Wood, a uh, master practitioner and master trainer in NLP. And I'm so excited to talk to you about all of this uh, stuff that I'm so passionate about and just to hear about what you've been doing. And, and yeah, it's just great. So can you introduce yourself a little bit and, and kind of what you've been doing and your training and all those kinds of things? All the things? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep it brief so we can actually have a, a conversation. But I'm Susan Palmer Wood, and I'm a master practitioner of Neuro Linguistic Programming. And I am really passionate about helping people wake up and take responsibility for the results that they're getting nice. and then up level it change it if they don't like the results they're getting specifically with um, in their career with their families and their relationships and with their kids um, that's been that's had the biggest impact on me and so that's how I love to get back I also incorporate a lot of other modalities so I'm an integrative coach I use energy work fire and Katie um, like so many tools but NLP is my main focus. Oh that's so awesome that you do a lot of energy work too like I'm a big believer in all that I think we'll get in soon and, and really just so uh, we can kind of just make sure people know the definitions of NLP and and uh, you know breakthrough sessions and really you know what is a breakthrough session what is NLP? So NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming and the easiest way the way that I use it and people use NLP in so many different ways but it's really using the language of the mind to get consistent results, the results that you're after, right? And a breakthrough process is, oh my gosh, so it leverages NLP, hypnosis, and mental emotional release therapy. And so it's about eight to 12 hours, depending on the client. So wow. I'll do it in wow. one intensive day or across two days, about five hours a day. And again, I leave the space open for the client to step into and be safe so we're not watching the clock. But it's essentially like, what's the problem? We dig in and we, we excavate. What's that deeper level problem? Because have you ever experienced like, oh, I have a headache, so I'll take Advil, when really the problem is, something much bigger, like you're dehydrated, or right. you have too much caffeine, or you have too much stress, right? So yeah. the symptom is the headache, but the problem is something much deeper. So oftentimes people will come to me with the problem, and then we dig in, so I find the underlying belief, which when released, would free them up to so many different possibilities and peace of mind and the results that they really want. Mm -hmm. Where before when they come to me, it's like, this is my problem, this is what's possible, this is all there is. And then I help them expand what's possible for them so that they can step into it. I'm so excited to share stories of that. So after we dig in and we get the problem, then we do this mental emotional release therapy process where we release trapped, what we like to call baggage, but it's really trapped emotions and limiting beliefs and release it, yeah. and then help them step into the vision of what they want, because so many of us know what we don't want, we don't really know what yeah. we do want, so once they have that vision, that's when the coaching starts after that. Oh, that's so beautiful, That's I love that definition, and uh, for everybody listening, that's really good, that's amazing, and uh, you know, I'm going to my master practitioner and MER and all that stuff this summer, and like, I'm like closer, I cannot wait to uh, go deeper, and and uh, just love NLP so much. And, you know, really I want to hear about, you know, I, I think the biggest thing, I've been talking about this so much lately is the NLP and MER, and people are probably just sick of those acronyms. Like, I want to hear results, right? Like, what are some things that, uh, that you've done with clients? Yeah. So, first of all, congratulations on going to MasterCrack. Completely changed my life, transformed my life, and helped me step into who I really was. So, we can tell my story later. But the results that I'm really seeing with clients is they have lost, most of the clients that I work with are really successful um, entrepreneurs or business people, and they've lost their sense of self. They have external success, hmm. and they are feeling empty, void, yeah. overwhelmed, full of anxiety, and they don't know who they are anymore. Um, and so after going through the breakthrough process, they're able to have a better sense of who they are and what's possible to them. So 
So let's make it tangible. I was working with, um, just last week, someone, a CEO who had really extreme anxiety and he was a perfectionist and he had a really hard time concentrating and he was involved in so many different things and he wasn't doing anything really well. He was on two different um, anxiety medications. He was on three different blood pressure medications. He was on an ADD medication and smoked pot. And he was like, I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what's next for me. I don't know if I should do this or this. And he was, you know, he was like, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to focus. Yeah. And so we ended up doing an eight hour session, not even two four hour sessions because the schedule was so packed. We did it in one focus session and he was able to stay focused the whole entire time. And he went from this to, I saw him physically transform. Wow. His shoulders dropped, his eyes focused. Um, he, he settled down his hands and his, his, he was taking deeper breaths. So his, his neurology had totally calmed down. Yeah. And wow. I was so happy for him. And then, of course, I check in with my clients uh, just to see how they're doing and how they're adjusting because what happens is, like, have you ever had a time when your, I call it the mean girl, your face is telling you, like, why did you do that? Or I can't do that. Or you're so stupid. Or we'll never get this figured out. Or I can't do that. Or it's always going to be that way. Right. You know, and it goes over and over and over again. And so when you release that, like, <laughs> where, where did it go? It's yeah. It's calm. It's quiet. Yeah. People start poking up and they're like, who am I without this? Yeah. And again, that's where we create the vision and the values and the goals and the focus because so you've completely transformed yeah or on your way to transforming to becoming mm -hmm. and so it's um but you're going back to the same environment sometimes and the same people so i help people future pace and yeah. understand like so now go through your day and anticipate what might happen how does this empower you handle it so they're able to walk through it. So it's a, a, a different way of being from anxiety to, to calm. And another instance is, you know, with coaching, it's not a one and done. Breakthroughs aren't one and done. I used to believe that. It's at, because we're layers. And your unconscious mm -hmm. mind is only going to allow you to release what you're ready for, what you can handle. Right. And then you spiral up until the next thing. And then you release that, right? Yeah. You gain more and more trust with yourself and more and more empowerment as you go. Hmm. So I was working with someone who had to make a million dollar deal or not and couldn't decide what to do. And I was like, wow. I, I don't want to be the one to tell you what to do. <laughs> I do not want that responsibility. But yeah. we did a parts integration because again, we got down to what's the problem if you do, what's the problem if you don't, what are you afraid of? And it stemmed back from the stock market crash of 2008 and then even before that was some issues with their parents. Wow. So, so doing a parts integration, bringing wholeness back to, you know, who they are, releasing some of the trauma, allowed her to see clearly what she wanted to do, what yeah. she really wanted to do, and step into that. So there's so many possibilities. Yeah, that's so crazy. You talk about the uh, the physical transformation. You know, me and my uh, wife uh, just went through our own breakthrough sessions. Uh, last couple of weeks and when she got out of the session I was like oh my god you look different like facial features are different you look so much calmer like everything just totally different face in a way it was really I was just so inspired by that like that is so crazy that there's that much your subconscious is holding that much right oh it's so crazy it is yeah so for me I used to um, always be complimented on my smile and like your eyes, they just smile. And, <laughs> and then I noticed for a while, I didn't hear that. I didn't notice it, but then I was like, wow, you know what? Like, I know I'm miserable, but people used to not realize it. Now I don't even hear like, you have such a great smile. Blah, blah, huh. blah. And then when I released all of this stuff, it was amazing that I would start to hear that. You have so much yeah. joy about you. You're so passionate about what you talk about. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's just releasing it. And we just don't know. And I. I, I, I talk about um, the power of MER and what we do is, you know, we're told when we're really little, stop crying, 
you don't need that. You're not hungry. You just ate. What are you so upset about? Stop being angry. And we're told to not pay attention to our emotions and to seek outside what we should be feeling. Hmm. And we shove it down and we shove it down and we shove it down because we don't think it's appropriate or maybe it's not appropriate to handle it or maybe we don't know how to handle it. Yeah. So years of this, what we call baggage, shoving it down, it's like pushing down a beach ball underwater. Yeah. And after a while, it hits you in the face. Right? <laughs> right. You can't hold it for so long. So what that looks like is things like with my clients, it's coming home after a long day and yelling at your kids. It's being totally disconnected from your partner. Mm. It is road rage in traffic. Mm -hmm. It is um, lack, not having any patience with your coworkers. Um, it's crying over things and getting really frustrated over small things. So it is responding out of context to the situation. And all that means is your unconscious mind is saying, oh, look, here's the situation to trigger your baggage. Yeah. Now maybe you'll deal with it. <laughs> and we go, uh-uh, hell no. I'm going to push this shit back down. Yeah, okay. right. So we push it back down instead of taking the opportunity to look, be empowered, be the observer, and look at what's going on. Yeah. We tend to blame our circumstances for how we feel. Yeah. That's what we learned early on. And empowerment is really accepting that we are responsible for our responses. Right. Right? And we can blame other people, but it's choice. And yeah. being a cause. Being a cause for our life and our response is the most empowering thing on the planet. Yeah, that's uh, so so amazing the baggage thing is because I think the biggest transformation for me with like the NLP practitioner, you know, the the basic level is uh, and the way Dr. Matt talks about it is this baggage is now that I used to do the same thing is just hide it, push it away, push the anxiety, all the things I used to feel so much more and push it down. But now it's like when there's a trigger, when I feel angry or sad or whenever these emotions come up, it's like, oh, thank you. Like there's some baggage left and I have some work to do and now I'm excited. Right. And it's such a big change from, you know, for years, I, I've literally been angry my entire life. Like, and when my breakthrough session, it came back to um, my dad was smoking around my mom in the womb. And that really made her angry. And I didn't know that, right? And I was just so angry forever and ever. When I released that, now it's like I can feel angry. I can feel sad. I can feel happy. I can feel a joy. I can feel all these emotions throughout a day. And it's like it's so releasing. And it's um, honestly, you know, it's been a month now probably since my breakthrough session. And it's just so amazing how different that is than being stuck in anger yeah. stuck in fear it's like no there's like this whole like emotions are precious even when they're bad it's like thank you yeah. right well they're your they're your gps right yeah and like we're we are i like to say you're not broken you don't need fixed you just need to shed who you're not <laughs> that's good right and so yeah. so all of these emotions are your it's, it's like your emotional guidance system and so when you have these things, you know yeah. when you're being triggered, you know when you have baggage to release, you know when you're, something is not congruent with you. Right. And so you can be the observer. So congratulations, you must be on fire <laughs> to want to tell everybody about this because it's so powerful. Yeah, so, right, right. Yeah, celebrating you. And being angry all the time, it's so prevalent in our society, that and stress and anxiety, right? Yeah. Anger is... is um, much less vulnerable and more socially acceptable. Like, oh, he's just got an anger problem, or uh -huh. oh, don't make him mad. Right. You know, but it's covering up the sadness and the fear. And yeah. even when I get mad, like I, I, I was by a close family member not too long ago, and I was really mad. And I'm like, ooh, I haven't felt mad about this person in a long time. You know what? I'm just going to be mad. I'm just going to feel the feelings yeah. instead of like NLPing them away. I'm going to feel the feelings so that they're here. And gave my permission, gave myself permission. Then I'm like, okay, after like a day. Well, it was a couple of days actually. <laughs> when I <laughs> dug in to like feel it, I'm like, blah. Because it's really important, right? Yeah. And, um, and then I'm like, okay, if I was sad, what would I be sad about? Yeah. If I, was, if I was afraid of something, what am I afraid of? If I'm feeling guilty about something, what am I guilty about? What am I hurt about? Yeah. I'm like, oh, <laughs> wow. And so just peeling it back and looking at it. And, and then when this person visited, I wanted to say, you know, in my mind, like, tell them not to talk about this because then it, it upsets me. So just let's have a good weekend. Just don't talk about this. And then I was like, oh, look at me 
giving my power away. Yeah. I, I need you, Thomas, I need you to do this so that I feel better. Right. That is so disempowering. The truth is, I get to choose how I respond, and no one can make me feel anything. It's my choice. So as yeah. soon as I heard myself say that, I'm like, oh, we have work to do. Okay. <laughs> you know? And it's me. If someone is saying something to trigger something in me, it is in me. Because the situation is neutral until I assign meaning to it. Right, right. right? Yeah. So that's how I know it's me. It's not the other person. Yeah. Gosh, that's so powerful, isn't it? Just being empowered to choose how you feel, choose the way you want to see things, you know, and that is that is why I'm just screaming on every rooftop I can about MER and NLP and all these things. It's just, it's so powerful And this, you know, like I've said before, my mission is to take this to the fire world because I really believe how much better can our firefighters be and police officers and, you know, EMTs with this, with this mindset, with this uh, ability to to really dig deep and be better people inside and with themselves and all of that stuff. It's so, it's going to be huge. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for doing that because these people are lifesavers. Yeah. Okay? And they have such a big mission and such a big purpose and such big hearts and they put themselves on the line every day and they see things that we don't have to see because they're taking care of it. And there are things that you can't see, yeah. you know, but, but you can take the trigger out of it. So you right. can get the learning and you can get the you can remember the memory but not be triggered by it so that right. you can leverage it for your future growth one of the things did you know that when we shove down our emotions so when you go back and you release the emotion you also get the learning yeah. and how we grow is by getting the learning so when you think about it when people go through MER they are unleashing untapped potential. <laughs> yeah. With all the learning. Yeah. Yes, cool? yeah, so, so amazing. The firefighters, the firefighters and the and the police and that you help are going to be even more empowered and even stronger when they release this the, the normal human condition, the emotions. Because they've got the big hearts, otherwise they wouldn't be in yeah. service. Right. They wouldn't be in service, right? Yeah. And so that just empowers them to to be even stronger, even faster, even better. Right, right. And I kind of want to shift a little bit to like physical, physical stuff and energy and emotions. And, you know, my little story here is like through my breakthrough session was um, like I've had trouble sleeping forever, like almost my whole life again, like terrible sleeper. Um, and then when I went through the breakthrough session, it's like, oh, I've been like waiting up at night for my dad to come home. And when I released that, it was like, I can sleep so easy now. I go to sleep in like 30 minutes, which used to be like two, three hours every single night, you know. Um, so there's like a major shift there in my life. Um, but what, what I've really noticed is uh, the energy shifts in my body during the breakthrough session and then everything I've read and studied about emotions causing harm inside of our bodies and actually twisting the energy. And, and uh, you can go acupuncture, you can go Reiki, it doesn't matter what modality you want to talk about. It's like there's energy that's stuck in our organs, right, in our body. And, and I want to get your perspective on that, and uh, especially since you do energy healing and those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So emotion is energy in motion. Nice. So one of the things that I do with my clients as it relates to, and anyone who's watching can do this, if you have a pain or, um, yeah, so sometimes when I do release work, people will be like, oh, I feel it in my stomach. Oh, I feel it in my neck. Oh, I feel it in my head. But what is it? Mm -hmm. What is that pain? What is that anger? What is it? And, and describe it. What's the shape? What's yeah. the color? You know, um, which way is it moving? And so if you move it, if you get, so if, if emotion is energy in motion, and you can identify the direction it's moving in your body. So let's just say for your anger, right? Uh -huh really angry and it's feeling stuck, when you understand that you get in touch with the, mo the direction that it's moving, when you move it in reverse, it actually dissipates. Nice. Right? So it's, it's emotion is energy in most, and so when you get in touch with that, uh -huh. you personify it and then you reverse it. Um, the Center for Disease Control, I can't remember the percentage, but it's something like 93% of all dis-ease has emotional that blows people. It's mind. so crazy. 
93% because we, in allopathic medicine, we treat the symptoms. Yeah. Right? I, I also did functional medicine um, training, coaching. So it's, it's very, you know, um, uh, root cause, root cause mm -hmm. analysis. It's a lot of emotional work, uh, right? Because it, it, it comes up in so many different ways so that when you treat what's really going on, it allows your body to heal. Because if you think about it, like you think of like constriction, right? Like emotional constriction and anger and fear yeah. and anxiety. Your body is like this. Well, how can things move, you know, and, and um, supply oxygen and blood when you're like this emotionally? Yeah. That's why a lot of times were you tired after your breakthrough? You know, actually, I think the biggest thing that's happened since then, like physically, is um, I went to acupuncture just to like get a checkup and get my organs tested and all this stuff. And the acupuncture is like, your body's going through this major detox. Like, we're going to put you on an herbal supplement for like the next 30 days and really flush out your body. And it was like, you know, my skin's got all these rashes and stuff like just pouring out of my body. And it's like, holy crap, like, there's a lot of stuff that's just physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, just like coming out of the body right now. It's really interesting. You know, that's, that's so cool. That's so <laughs> cool for you. I just want to celebrate you because that's amazing. Right. And it can be kind of stressful too. It's like, oh, this is happening. Is this supposed to be happening? It's yeah. Good. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, but a lot of times people feel really tired after a release yeah. and they release their anxiety and their fear and their anger because it's just too intense energy. Right? Yeah. And also when you're really stressed out, it's like all of your blood and things go to your extremities so that you can run because your body thinks that yeah. you're going to fight. And um, so that makes it hard to think, hard to reproduce, hard to digest your food, hard yeah. to do anything. Right. Your body thinks it's got to run. But as far as physical manifestations, you reminded me of something. One of my clients had a severe allergic reaction to pet hair. Uh -huh. She loved pets. But she had asthma eczema, um, hives, and she would wheeze and sneeze whenever she was around animals. Oh. And um, so we did the allergy model, of an NLP um, process. Within 20 minutes, she was able to um, release it and then like wrap her arms around the dog and nuzzle her head in and look up at me with tears. <sighs> Because for the first time, her hand didn't turn red when she tried to pet a dog. Wow. And she wasn't wheezing, and she wasn't breaking out in hives. So she had physical manifestation of, of these issues that were actually emotional, mental and emotional. Isn't that, that's just so, so crazy. Yeah. So it yeah. is, it is <laughs> amazing. People are sleeping better. Yeah. Um, they're handling situations better. They're, um, they're losing weight, yeah. they're um, healing illnesses, they're healing allergies um, because of the mental and emotional reasons. Yeah, yeah. And I think the biggest thing for me is like, you, you asked if I got tired. I think I went the opposite way. Like, I really feel like I'm 19 again and my energy is like off the wall. And what's really interesting is my language has changed back to like, being 19 and I'm saying stuff that's like really that's like hilarious like I'm in high school again almost it's so it's so interesting that there's there is um I think with the firefighting like 13 years of firefighting there was just so much stuff down and so many experiences that were just so hardcore that were just weighing down I mean it's gone and it's it, it's gone yeah isn't that crazy <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, the you know, the tiredness after M E R goes away, it's that detox, right? Right. And then once that's gone and you feel and you can play and you can be a kid, you're, you're probably so much more fun to be around. <laughs> right. Right? <So>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so that's ama what an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so grateful that you get to pass this on to other people too. Right. Oh my gosh, I know. I'm so excited for Master Prack and and just everything in LP is, is basically my life right now. It's so great. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think, gosh, do you have any more stories up your sleeve? <laughs> Let me think. Well, one, it's so, um, gosh, I have so many. Let me think. Um, the one, I mean, the thing that helped me, so I had a lot of trauma as a child. And what happened was I poured myself into my work mm -hmm. and I became 
a workaholic. I worked more than I went to high school when I was in school. I started wow. working at 15 wow. so that I could um, have a place to stay when I needed to and get out of the house as quickly as possible. And I just poured myself into work. And I became a workaholic. And what happened was I didn't know it at the time, but I was hustling for my worthiness. Yeah. I was hustling for external validation. Right. And I thought the more success and the more money I made, that the more fulfilled I would be and, and the better I would feel. But I couldn't outrun the imposter syndrome and the self-doubt and yeah. the self-loathing and the self-sabotage. So on the outside, everything looked great, right? I was yeah. hustling for like corporate executive of the year and mom of the year and wife of the year. And, but I was like exhausted and unfulfilled and miserable. And um, my health was deteriorating. Speaking about, you know, it's like you push it down and don't deal with it and don't deal with it. I was trying to outrun all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, my natural path said, you need to stop. Your health is a ticking time bomb. You don't want what's next. And I'm like, I can't stop. I have too many people counting on me. I have too many things to do. Like, have you ever met anyone or related to that? Or oh, like, oh yeah. no, I can't take time off. Like, people mm -hmm. need you oh, know? yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so that was me. And um, what it's like, what I say is you can't outrun God's plan for you. <laughs> so it's like you think you're in charge. Yeah. <laughs> right. So one day I was getting ready for work. I was exhausted. It was another night of working in my sleep. Oh, right? yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was sleeping. I was exhausted, not digesting my food, um, had autoimmune diseases, had leaky gut syndrome and had thyroid disease. And I looked down at the floor and I just collapsed and I couldn't get up. Wow. I couldn't get up for my kids, couldn't get up for my job, definitely couldn't get up for me. And I just cried and I cried and I cried. And I finally had to give. And I went out on family medical leave act for three months. I was pretty much housebound. I had lost my cognitive functioning. Um, I would take naps at the top of my stairs. I couldn't do anything. I was a shell of myself, and I was really scared hmm. and frustrated because I'm a, I was a doer. Yeah. And um, you know, after I so I went to um, after about three months of pretty intensive um, like medications and supplements and therapy. Um, I didn't know better at the time, but I did. I needed to process the trauma I hadn't processed yeah. yet. No, I'd gone to five Tony Robbins seminars, and <laughs> I was, you know, I'd gone to some other Huna, and I'd done some other things. I wasn't connecting it. It was all up here. I was like, give me another workshop, give me another book, give me another guru, give me right. But it was yeah. staying up here. So um, I went to Zion National Park for the first time. Nice. Friend, convinced me to go. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm broken. I can't go. But I went. And um, after three days of just relaxing in the park and being in nature, I love nature, she said, let's go on this walk to Angel's Landing. I didn't know what that was. I was like, I can't really walk <laughs> yeah. that far. Do you know what it is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I had no clue. And she's like, well, just go slow. And we'll just, you know, we'll just take stops. And I'm like, I can't really, I take naps at the top of my stairs. I can't really take hands. So we started walking, and we stopped, and we walked, and we stopped, and we stopped, and we and then pretty soon, that walk started becoming steeper, and steeper, and more vertical, and then pretty soon, after a long period of time, I'm holding onto chains so I don't fall oh, off yeah. the cliff, right? Oh, my gosh. come down, because there's just this narrow thing, and I'm like, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, my God, and for the first time in a while, I felt some adrenaline, and I'm like, I got to yeah. It's got to be close, right? And so I make it to the top, and I throw my hands up in the air, and I say, I am not broken. Nice. There's nothing wrong with me. And I look down, right, at what I had done, and I just changed my mindset that fast. Like, wow. And I made it down. What took me eight hours to get up took me four to get down. But my health hadn't changed. My circumstances hadn't changed. What I knew was possible changed. Nice. But when I got down, I dove head first into the power of the mind and understanding that what goes on here creates what goes on out here. Right? Yeah. So our beliefs, our expectations, our past, everything like it all creates 
our, our perception is our projections. We are creating our reality. And I had searched for so long. I've been striving for out here to fit in here. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. So I ended up um, leaving my job and um, going to another job where I burned out again. And I'm like, this was another tech company where it was all about healthy, happy workforces, and I burned out. So I'm like, it might be me. I don't know. <laughs> and so I, I, a, a book, I was cleaning up a book. I left my job, and um, I, this book was a HUNA book, which is from the Empowerment Partnership. Yeah. On the inside it said, um, take NLP practitioner training January 2009. And I went, oh, yeah, I love NLP. I should do that. And so then I went... And I, I flew down to San Jose. I live in Washington in the Seattle area. And I was at the front, leaning forward 10 hours a day with more energy at the end of the day than at the beginning of the day saying, this is what I need to do. Yeah. And then um, when I did master practitioner training and I released all of that, um, the trauma and the trapped emotions and the limiting beliefs and the unworthiness and my migraines went away. I didn't have to use um, the uh, jaw guard, the mouth oh, guard anymore. Yeah. Um, weight disappeared. Um, my health turned around. I had more energy. I had more clarity. I had more purpose. I had more patience with people. My relationship with my husband improved because I was the problem. <laughs> the relationship with my kids improved. Everything improved. And I said, I can't not do this. And so as soon as I made that decision, I opened up the doors and I, my business has taken off because people need this. Yeah. They think that they're stuck. They think there's no way out. They think I am just the way I am, which is a limiting belief. People can literally be, do and have whatever it is they want. So that is my empowering story. Oh, that's so good. Understanding that I get to choose and I still have all of the emotions. I just posted a Facebook it wasn't Facebook Live, but a video today about something I went through. So Yeah. Oh, told. that's so powerful. That's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. And the limiting beliefs are so so intense because they're they're so literal. And through my breakthrough session I really took this to heart and I learned this I guess matter of fact that the beliefs that we have are so literal. And here's here's my story is that uh, I had this belief that if I was late well I'll go back a little bit. When I would be late to somewhere, like five minutes early, I would have like huge anxiety, like sweating, like really nervous, like, oh, I'm getting hot. Like, oh my gosh, this is a really big deal. Like I'm being late, like something bad is going to happen, you know? And when I went through the breakthrough session, I went back to this time where I was on this a fire assignment and I was in this, you know, fire truck with some overhead and we're like driving up this canyon and checking out houses, you know, making a plan for the fire that's coming and all this stuff. And, you know, there's fire over the ridge from us. We know where it is, but it's, you know, it's really active. And, you know, the the plane in the sky called Air Attack that's kind of like coordinating like the whole fire from the air and the helicopters and all that, he calls in and calls our engine numbers like, hey, whoever's in that truck needs to get out of there now. Like, it's getting bad. You know, so we turn around, we're getting out, and we get a flat tire. And now there's like fire at the top of the ridge and it's like coming towards us. We've got not a lot of time to change this tire and there's like helicopters dropping on like close to us, you know, like it's getting really serious. And I just remember this overhead saying, I'm late. I'm late for my briefing. I'm late for my, my briefing with my crew. I'm late for the meeting. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. That's all he keeps saying. And in this session, I realized like, oh my God, I'm like literally tied being late to death and so when I was ever late I felt like I was dying like literally felt like I was dying um and at least that I, like all like for the last month I've been going places late just to like test it you know it's like yeah it's great <laughs> <laughs> <Love> it. that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> but that's, that's your evidence for the future I can be late yeah <laughs> it's yeah. it's just so literal like I just and there's I have multiple stories like that where it's it's literally literal it's so literal that it, it doesn't even make sense, right? It's not even logical. It's just, it's amazing how much of those limiting beliefs we all carry with us until we release them. And it's just so empowering to let those go. It really is. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's really interesting how it impacts your life without even, you even realizing it. And yeah. we have some from such a young age. It's like we're in this um, 
sleepwalking stage in life, right? And so yeah. you're three years old in this beta brainwave stage. Yeah. And so if like let's say I'm working hard at the computer and um, my daughter walks in and I'm doing a Zoom and um, you know and I say I'm on um, just stop you know she's like but I wanted to show you something I'm like not now you know she that little girl um, you know might make up in her mind that she's not lovable or that work is more important right. or that work is stressful or that work is hard or you have to work hard to get money or Whatever it is, mm -hmm. but we get these meanings from as we're little kids, and then we continue to get validation that that belief is true because our brain doesn't want to make us a liar. Yeah. So it forms, you know, so much in our life that we don't even realize what's driving us. So I love that you had that realization during MER or during the breakthrough session so that you could release that. Yeah. It could be late. And it doesn't necessarily just have to be when you're zero to three, it can happen at any time. Right, right. That's a great example. Yeah. Yeah, such a clear example. So cool. And, you know, I think time is getting us a little bit here. So um, I really want to get you on the podcast. If, if you want to do that in the future, I think that'd be great to really spend an hour and dive a little deeper into this stuff and tell more stories and just do some more awesome conversation. I would love to. Thank yeah. you so much. This was really great being with you today. Yes, thank you so much. And, um, you know, someday I'm from Washington State, actually, in Olympia. So maybe someday we'll meet up. So, cool. yeah. yeah. I'm in Sammamish. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Do you have any last words or anything for people listening? Um, I would say um, you, like, your greatness. There is greatness inside of you. If you're suffering, then find help because there is a way. NLP, MER, the breakthroughs are extremely powerful. You don't have to suffer alone. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing to give people hope that they, that they yeah. aren't stuck anywhere unless they choose to be yeah. because there is a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if uh, people want to follow me, um, you can find me at SusanPalmerWood.com. It's my website. Nice. I'm on Facebook, on Instagram, and I post um, tools and strategies and inspiration and all the things so i'd love to connect with anyone i also do complimentary coaching calls so if anyone wants to say like anything is possible even for me you know then i would love to talk to them yeah too. yeah anything is possible i believe it yeah you can change in an instant right you can that fast it's in that right. moment of decision sometimes it takes a long time to get to that like i'm ready yeah <laughs> the readiness for change but it is that fast yeah yeah it's really powerful. so powerful Thank you so much for, for talking tonight, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.